Hello everyone and welcome back to my C programming series where we introduce the C programming language from a game programming perspective. So last time we sort of gave an overview of what the series is going to entail. For this first video, we are actually going to go through the setup process, at least on Windows, as far as how we get set up to actually program C, right? And so there are many, many, many ways to do this, right? There are many applications you could use to actually edit your files, right? C files, the code is nothing but a plain text file, right? You can actually edit it in Notepad if you wanted to do that, or Notepad++, Sublime Text, whatever you want to use, right? You guys are free to use whatever you want there. However, I would highly suggest from a beginner's perspective that you use what's called a, uh, a development environment or more specifically an integrated development environment or IDE. You, may got, you guys may hear that term thrown around a lot, right? And what that is, is it gives you sort of a plethora of tools to use for a specific language or set of languages in order to make developing that language easier. It provides things like suggestions as to what you might want to type next in your code as you're writing it, or references to things that you've already written. And I'll show you guys these things as we progress in the series. So the one that I am going to recommend that we use at least for this series is called Visual Studio. And we want to actually use Visual Studio 2019, the community edition. It is 100% free. You don't have to pay anything for it. It is a free download. Uh, this is available for Windows and I believe Mac. For you Linux users, you will need to look into finding a text editor that you like. Um, I know that, uh, what is it, G-Edit uh, is a, a decent text editor, at least to start with. Um, you could also use Vim, something, like, something along those lines, or Emacs. Any of those things will work fine, and then your compiler will be GCC. I probably will be putting a video at some point on how to set all that stuff up. However, for right now, this is going to be purely Windows-based, uh, simply because Visual Studio 2019 is the best editor and IDE out there, at least in my opinion. It has the best tool set out there. It's not perfect, but it definitely is pretty good. So let me just switch here away from the camera. You are going to want to go to visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads and you are going to want to grab the Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition. As I mentioned before, it's 100% free. So you click the download button there. I'm not going to do that because I already have it downloaded and installed. However, the only thing of note is in the Visual Studio installer, if you follow through the prompts, uh, you will eventually come across a screen that looks something very similar to this, right? And um, I've got some other things installed here because I do um, some, some web development stuff and whatnot. You guys won't necessarily need all of these things, but the one you absolutely will need for this is the desktop development with C++. You do not need the universal platform development. Uh, for C++, we are not actually going to be using that. You can install it if you want, but I think it's actually pretty large. So I would just suggest using this uh, desktop development with C++. And that will give you everything that you need in order to, to actually proceed with this series. So once you have that installed and you go ahead and open up Visual Studio 2019, uh, you will see a screen that looks something like this. Now I've got projects here that I've opened um, that are other things that I'm working on. But what we're gonna wanna do is we're actually gonna wanna create a new project, right? And when we do that, you're gonna wanna be sure to change the language from C Sharp, which I think is their default, to C++, right? Make sure C++ is selected. Platforms, right now, we'll just use Windows, right? And we have this one in here called Empty Project. It may or may not be at the top for you, but uh, you wanna make sure that it says C++ Windows Console, right? This is the one that we want. We don't want anything uh, created for us because I wanna walk you guys through the process of creating this stuff, right? So with your empty project selected, go ahead and hit next. And you'll wanna choose a location. Uh, I never recommend putting it in um, this C users uh, source repo because this, this, this file path is sort of huge for default, right? And if your project becomes large, um, the length of your file path might become an issue. And if you have uh, any spaces like in your user or something like that, that could also be really bad, right? So I typically use something like development. So we're actually gonna go with uh, C series and um, we're gonna put that in the C development folder, which I already have uh, created. And that should be good. So go ahead and cr hit create and this will take a minute. Okay, great. So eventually Visual Studio will come up and um, you may may or may not have this solution explorer here on your left. Um, 
a fresh install will probably look a little bit different than this, but I didn't want to actually do my install for this video. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just pin this in place, right? So now that we have our Solution Explorer, uh, our Solution Explorer basically gives us a listing of all the files that we have in our solution. Now, I should probably explain what a solution is. So Visual Studio has a concept of projects and solutions. And a solution is merely a grouping of projects. And a project uh, ultimately becomes an assembly, right? Which uh, is either going to be a, uh, an executable file or a DLL file if you want to just have a library of code, right? And so uh, in our case, we're just gonna have a solution with a single project in it called C-Series. Um, and we are going to be building an executable, which is the default. So that is what we are going to be using. And we'll sort of go through some of these other things as we get to it. But for right now, what we'll want to do is there's a little button here um, that looks like sort of three files clicked over each other. I like to actually click this. It says show all files. I like to click that because uh, this default filter view is, is not great in my opinion. This is the integrated development environment that we will be working with. Um, and the very first thing that we're gonna wanna do is right click the C series project. And we're gonna say add new item. And we're gonna get a new window like this. Our options here are a header file, which is H, I'll get into that in a minute, or a CPP file. We are actually going to do a modification of this, right? So uh, I'm gonna call this main, but the file extension is going to be .c. And that is what differentiates a C file from C++, right? Because the compilation is actually a little bit different, right? You can't use um, C++ features within a C file if it's named with the C extension. The compiler is smart enough to know um, the difference between those two, right? So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit add. And here's our empty C file. So before we go any further, I want to explain really quickly what the files roles are in C, right? And so in in C, files are basically a, a random construct, right? It doesn't really matter what the, the layout of our files are, right? It doesn't matter what code is where, for the most part, the files all ultimately get fed through the compiler. Um, and we'll, we'll walk through that a little bit, right? And so right now we're gonna be dealing with one file, but I will eventually show you guys how to deal with multiple files uh, a little bit further down the road. Let's go ahead and write some code. And I'm basically gonna write the code first, and then um, I'm going to explain it to you guys, right? Okay, so this is what a basic C program looks like, right? And I'm not going to explain everything that's on here all at once. Uh, I'm basically going to just sort of step through the, the portions of this that are relevant, right? Because I wanna get something on the screen so that you guys can kind of see what we're doing, right? And so every program starts off with a function called main, right? This is what the operating system looks for when it is trying to launch the program, right? This is basically saying, uh, this is the entry point of the application as it's called, right? So you always uh, have a, a main function that takes uh, these parameters. And again, I'll get into what parameters are and what all these various uh, words here mean, but you always have a main, right? And this is always sort of your, your start point for the, the application, right? And then we're calling this thing called printf uh, and we're passing it a hello world um, string, right? And a string is basically um, just this uh, quoted text that we see right here, right? And so what this is gonna do is it's going to do a bunch of things and actually cause this text to be written to the screen. So uh, to build this, we'll go to build, build solution, right? And then you'll see down here, build one succeeded, zero failed, zero up to date, zero skipped, right? So what we're looking for is that succeeded. And anytime we see errors down here, that is how we know what happened um, if we actually did something wrong. The compiler will usually tell us about those things, right? And so we know that our, our program compiled. Now I say compiled, what exactly does that mean? So basically what the, uh, there's a program called the compiler that reads in a series of files like this one that takes this code that we've written and converts it into a binary type of file, whether it's an executable or whether it's a library file, like a DLL. You guys have probably seen those before um, in your application folders, things like that. What this does is it basically takes this 
this code and it outputs it to a sort of intermediate file. And uh, it does that for each one of these C files that we have. And uh, then all of those intermediate files get run through a program called a linker. And that linker basically takes all those individual um, intermediate files and combines them together to make your executable, right? So if we actually go right click the solution and open folder and file explorer, this is what our solution looks like, right? So we have our solution file here, which is this guy. This guy. We have our C series here, which is what contains um, our various project files and settings, things like that. And then uh, we have our uh, main.c file here, and then we have a debug folder, right? So this debug folder is what contains those intermediate files, right? And I'm not gonna go into what all these files are, but you'll notice there's one here called main.obj. And this is that intermediate file that I was talking about, right? And so it takes each one of these obj files that are created, and up at this level in debug, it links it all together and creates an executable, right? And uh, there are various configuration things in here that we'll eventually touch on to change how all of that works, but that's the basic process, right? So if we actually, um, if we run this right now, if we double click this guy, you, you might have seen that it sort of flashed really quick and went away. And that's because our program basically prints this out and exits. In order to actually see uh, this program run without going away, uh, I'm gonna go up here into the address bar and just select that, backspace it, and type CMD for command. And this is our command prompt, right? And uh, you guys will wanna get familiar with this as time goes on. Um, you'll wanna get familiar with how to use this. And I'm not gonna cover that too, too much here except for where it's relevant. Uh, but basically what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to call this C series EXE from here. Because remember, we created a console application, right? And so this console is where this application actually has to run in order for you to actually see anything that's happened with it, right? So in order to call it, we're gonna type C series.exe and press enter. And when we do that, you'll note we have our hello world text. So just to recap, what's happened here is we've written some code in a file, we've compiled that file, that file got uh, translated into a intermediate file, an OBJ file, and then that, that file was then linked, and it's the only file so far, it was then linked into an executable, and we generated a executable file, which we were then able to run from the command prompt. Great. So let's take a look at one more thing before we close out this video. So the last thing we want to take a look at is, right, it's kind of inconvenient to have to browse to this folder every single time and, and run the application this way, this way, right? We don't want to have to do that. So I'm actually going to close these. Thankfully, our program here actually gives us a way to do that right from in here, where we can actually see the application run. You'll see a little, uh, what looks like a green play button that says local Windows debugger. And we're going to want to use that. And when we click that, you'll note that it flashes and sort of goes away, right? And this is the same problem as before is, you know, it, it sort of does one thing and then immediately exits. And um, Visual Studio doesn't even have time really to display it. It sort of comes up for a second and goes away. In order to fix the issue of our application closing too quickly, we're gonna do one more thing. Okay, so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to add these two lines of code, right? We've got care C and a, uh, a scan F underscore S in between quotation, uh, quotation marks, we have a percent %c, and then a comma, and then an ampersand %c. And then we close off that parenthesis, and we have a semicolon here at the end. Now, I promise I will go into detail into all of these components and explain exactly what these are. Unfortunately, these are some constructs that I have to sort of put in place right now without explaining before we get too much further into this, just so that we can get things running. So we'll go ahead and build. And uh, I did that by pressing Control Shift B, which is a keyboard shortcut for build solution, right? Um, and then we can go ahead and run the debugger again. Uh, the shortcut key for that, by the way, is F5. So you can go ahead and press F5. And now what we get is we get a new command window with hello world printed to the screen. And it doesn't go away because what it's waiting for is input, right? So this scan F uh, underscore S, this is actually saying we're waiting for keyboard input, right? It's it's enter it's waiting for us to enter any key, right? So we could press S if we wanted to or press enter, and then it causes the application to go away, right? 
And so um, when the application reaches this point, um, it actually closes down. So there's one more line that I wanna add that every proper C program should do, right? And that's return zero. And this basically tells the operating system that the program completed successfully. Again, I'm not gonna explain that in depth for now, just take it at face value and we will explain it in future videos. Anyway, that is all there is for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, consider subscribing, hit the little bell so that you know the next time one of these videos comes out and I will see you guys in the next video.